Good morning. Welcome to St. Thomas the Apostle Church as we celebrate the 33rd Sunday of Ordinary Time. We're coming near the close of our church's liturgical year, and you can certainly tell that by the scripture readings that always call us to be ready. I thank you um, for the gift of your presence, not only those of you who are here, but those who will join us online this morning. And thank you for following um, the protocols, wearing your mask keeping the appropriate social distancing. I invite you to please stand and we'll join together in singing our gathering hymn, Enter the Journey.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. As we gather together, as we journey together as people of faith, we're mindful that Jesus is present among us now, so let us pause a few moments, aware of that presence, and together let us pray for the grace to be open to the Spirit, and together let us acknowledge that we are sinners in need of God's mercy and grace to prepare ourselves to encounter the Lord once again in these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you call us, your disciples, to always be ready, for we know not the day nor the hour. Lord, have mercy. Lord Lord Jesus, you continue to nourish and strengthen us through your word and sacrament. Christ, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you send us, your disciples, into the world to be your witnesses, signs of your presence and love. Lord, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us into everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. constant gladness of being devoted to you. For it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Proverbs. When one finds a worthy wife, 
Her value is far beyond pearls. Her husband, entrusting his heart to her, has an unfailing prize. She brings him good and not evil all the days of her life. She obtains wool and flax and works with loving hands. She puts her hands to the distaff and her fingers ply the spindle. She reaches out her hands to the poor and extends her arms to the needy. Charm is deceptive and beauty fleeting. The woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a reward for her labors and let her works praise her at the city gates. The word of the Lord. letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Concerning times and seasons, brothers and sisters, you have no need for anything to be written to you, for you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief at night. When people are saying peace and security, then sudden disaster comes upon them. Like labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness for that day to overtake you like a thief. For all of you are children of the light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as the rest do, but let us stay alert and sober. The word of the Lord.
Lord be with you. This is a reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. May the spirit of the gospel always be upon our minds, our lips, and our hearts. Jesus told his disciples this parable. A man going on a journey called in his servants and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, and to a third one. To each according to his ability. Then he went away. Immediately the one who received five talents went out and traded with them and made another five. Likewise, the one who received two made another two. But the man who received one went off and dug a hole in the ground and buried his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came back and settled accounts with them. The one who had received five talents came forward, bringing the additional five. He said, Master, you gave me five talents. See, I have made five more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received two talents also came forward and said, Master, you gave me two talents. See, I have made two more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received the one talent came forward and said, Master, I knew you were a demanding person, harvesting where you did not plant and gathering where you did not scatter. So out of fear I went off and buried your talent in the ground. Here it is back. His master said to him in reply, You wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I did not plant and gather where I did not scatter. Should you not then have put my money in the bank so that I could have got it back with interest on my return? Now then, take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten. For to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And throw this useless servant into the darkness outside, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. The good news, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So this is um, spiritual economics that we were hearing. Okay? This isn't... Um, you know, but, but you know, they also say economically, if you would um, divide everybody's wealth, all the wealth in the world, and divide it up equally among everybody, and let everybody continue on, over so many years, it would still be like 10% own 90% of the wealth, and the other 90% own 10. That's on an economic pattern. But on a spiritual pattern, Jesus is teaching us and he uses that economic concept to talk about the spiritual life. And a very basic principle in the spiritual life is that God exists in gift form. Because God's being is for giving, right? We would cease to exist if it wasn't for the gift of God. So your very existence, that you are here, is an incredible gift. One that we often take for granted. But the very gift of existence is a great gift. For God's soul of the world, 
that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him may not die, but may have eternal life. So if we want God's life within us, our work is to be conformed to God. You must give of yourself as God pours himself out for us if we want God in our life. And that's a very basic principle in the spiritual life, and it permeates the pages of the sacred scriptures. And Jesus' parable that he uses to teach, the first two servants step out, and they risk the gifts that they've been given, giving them away. And they double their wealth. And the last one, of course, out of fear, closes in on himself, clings to his talents, burying them in the ground, and loses what he has. Um, the one who lives in the divine life shares what he or she has, and their life increases. The opposite holds true as well. The one who does not have the divine life keeps his or her gifts for self-serving purposes, and they ultimately decrease. That's spiritual physics. On a very practical level in our world today, many people struggle with their faith and with belief, how God works in their lives. Um, not only at times is our Catholic faith being attacked, but some quite often just belief in general can be attacked by others. And if that's not enough when we're dealing with that, life itself brings its challenges. Things don't work out the way we expect them to, and it can cause us to think, you know, where is God? And those experiences are okay. You know, whether it be uh, the death of a loved one, financial struggles, doubts, failures, disappointments, plans foiled, and on and on and on, our faith is often challenged. And ultimately, we are being called to put our trust in God. Our ultimate aim is to surrender to God's plan, to God's kingdom. Our ultimate aim is eternal life. Right? And when you have a different vision of living, when we move out of that space, when we're closed in on ourselves in our own little world, that brings a different vision as well. But when we, when we live in Christ, we're called to an expansive vision, a much bigger vision of trust and surrender to the mystery and to the plan of God that we do not always understand. Faith increases, our faith gets stronger, I think in the measure we give it away. You know, it's wrong to wait for your faith to get strong enough before you put it out there and say, I'm going to trust in God. You know, many people in America say you must privatize your faith, keep it to yourself. Well, that's a short road to losing your faith. If you want to grow in faith, you know, it will be opened at time to ridicule, to question and challenge. Just a simple example, I, uh, I always call my brother Pat, who gets up early as well and walks, and at, towards the end of my walk, I give him a call, and it's between 544 and 546 in the morning, and uh, <laughs> Give him a call, and he says, hey, I'm out walking with the weather bad up in the northeast. He often walks inside the church. But uh, we were talking, and he was talking about funerals. And he says, you know, one thing that ticks me off is, you know, we have a funeral mass. And this was pre-pandemic, though. But it would be full. And Catholics and Protestants are there. But he says, you know, I can't believe the number of Catholics who don't come up for Holy Communion during a funeral mass. They just sit there. He says, what a poor witness of their faith. And he says, you know, this is our faith. This is our liturgy. We come to the Eucharist. This is who we are. It defines us and shapes us. And yet we can't get up and go to Holy Communion? And he's right. 
You know, it seems so many Catholics um, at weddings and, and funerals kind of forget, the, the, you know, their liturgical practice. The responses should be much better. But anyway, he was talking about that, you know, from the perspective of witness and faith. And I think he's right. Um, you know, it's never been easy for us to witness to our faith. This was clearly true in the early church in the times of Peter and Paul, who, of course, were both martyrs for the faith. St. Lawrence, the deacon, um, Thomas More, Dorothy Day, John Paul II, and even Pope Francis were always open to being criticized and ridiculed. But should that surprise us? Look at the Master, right? Look at Jesus. He put himself out there, too. And um, we are called to the same, to put our faith into practice. And what's interesting is, when we put our faith into practice, it gets stronger. And when we don't, it will atrophy, it will weaken. So if you're struggling with your faith, you may want to find a path for the propagation of the faith, for the sharing of your faith. You'll want to put it out there. You're called to share whatever God has given you in your life, your talents, your time, your opportunities, your money, because it's all meant ultimately to bear fruit for the glory of God. What we've been given in life is ultimately meant to be shared shared for the kingdom of God. Another way of expressing that is the quote from St. John Paul II, whatever you do in life, let it reflect the love of Christ. Or another way to put it is the way that Jesus put it, the person who wants to save his life will lose it, but the person who loses his life for my sake will find it. You know, as we come near the end of our liturgical year, the Lord invites us, the scriptures invites us, the church invites us to stop and reflect upon our lives as to what we are living for. What brings us joy on this journey of faith? Ultimately, what brings us joy is living it, putting it into practice. When we share and give of ourselves as Jesus did, our faith will not only continue to grow, um, it will ultimately flourish. Together as God's people, let us now stand as we profess our common faith by praying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. With confidence in the goodness of God, let us now turn to the Lord in prayer. For the church, the people of God, may we neither hide our gifts, nor shrink from our taking risk, but use creativity, the talents entrusted to us for God's reign. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world, may nations work together to achieve an enduring peace, awakening all to the value of human life and the long-term impact of violence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are suffering immigrants, those recovering from natural disasters, and those who are grieving, may God bring light and strength to their spirits. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For healing of our nations, may God heal the wounded relationships and mistrust among all people and show us ways to work together for the common good. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for our parish family. May our newly accepted catechumens and welcomed candidates receive our support and prayers on their journeys of faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, may the sacrament of anointing and our community's compassion bring them healing and strength, especially Nancy and Reuben Day, Vern Boyer, Pat and Mary Kate Byorth, Paul Lacey, Don Brokop, and Jack Payton. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the dead, especially Dolores at heart, Jim Trithal, and those written in our Book of Remembrance, may those who rejoiced in God's gifts in this life enter into the joy of the Master. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the soul <clears throat> of Jim Downs, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Into the hands of each of, each of us, O oh God, you have entrusted all the blessings of nature and grace. Give us the will and wisdom to multiply the gifts your providence has bestowed, and make us industrious and vigilant as we await your son's return, so that we may rejoice to hear him call us good and faithful servants, and be blessed to enter into the joy of his kingdom. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Our preparation song is In Every Age. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and the work of human hands, that will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, O Lord, we pray that what we offer in your sight may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer, 
to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in, in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 
At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Jesus, the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our communion song is Taste and See.
destiny is past, and at your silent word, we return to dust and scatter to the wind. A thousand years are like a single moment gone, as the light that fades at the end. Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth and charity through Christ our Lord. We do have a few announcements. Um, food sign-up sheets are available at the church entrances for our Christmas food basket program. This, is, of course, has been in our parish now for 33 years, and this year we're helping out 169 families who are in need. Um, in addition to signing up here, you can also sign up online through our website or through Flocknote. You should have received a mailing from the parish from Kathy Lombardazzi um, in regards to um, the Christmas food baskets as well as the Christmas presents. Um, um, for the children. So um, if you'd like to sign up, uh, I encourage you to check it out online, or you can just simply sign up here. We've got the trees with the gifts um, tags placed on them, as we've done in the past. Um, this weekend, we're, um, we're celebrating the rite of acceptance and welcoming um, for five um, individuals, one who will be a catechumen who will be baptized at, East, at the Easter Vigil, hopefully baptized, confirmed, and receiving their first communion. And then four that will be making professions of faith and being confirmed, as well as receiving their communion here within the Catholic Church. Um, that will take place at the 1030 Mass today. You can see their pictures and a little bit about them on page four of the bulletin this weekend. 
Uh, we had 30 students celebrate their first reconciliation yesterday morning, and it was a great experience, and continue to hold those children in your prayer as they prepare for confirmation and First Communion, again, hopefully in the spring. The Eucharistic Adoration Chapel will officially open for adoration. That'll start this coming Thursday evening after the inauguration mass, which will take place at 7 p.m. here at St. Thomas. And then we will go in procession to the chapel um, with the Blessed Sacrament um, at the conclusion of the mass. And then adoration will begin um, officially in the chapel, perpetual adoration. If you're feeling led to being signed up for that, I encourage you to check that out, okay? You can get information either by calling the church office or there's, I believe there's um, a sheet on how you can sign up as well in, at the entrances of the church as you come in. Congratulations to the Laurel Locomotives for their big win over Billing Central. There's no doubt who the state champions are, I guess, with that convincing win. Congratulations to the Central volleyball team, state champions, once again, so hats off to them. Senior lost a tough, tough one, but Billings West will be in the championship, and so hats off to the Bears. In the meantime, enjoy this beautiful weather while we have it, all right? Play it smart out there, okay? The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ, glorifying the Lord by your lives. As we go forth, let us sing in the day of the Lord. We will be singing verses 4, 5, and 6.